If you were a different gender, would you be in a different job? If you followed the reporting on the gender wage gap last month, especially if you spend any time on Twitter, and even more especially if that meme up in the corner causes your blood to boil, then you won't need a reminder that the debate about how and why men and women choose their jobs can turn shouty very, very quickly. Women just don't go for the high-powered job. It's the glass ceiling that's keeping mediocre white men in power. Now, I enjoy a good shouting match as much as the next person, but the details can sometimes get lost. And the details about women's choices in the labor market are what my research is all about. As an economist, I'm interested in prices. Now, a price is not just a number that you see on a little sticker in the corner shop. For example, when I was thinking about whether to go for a PhD studentship after my master's, I weighed up different aspects of that decision. I thought about the intellectual challenge, the freedom to organize my own work in a way that suits me, and the money as well, which is less than what many of my classmates went on to earn in their jobs. So by choosing to do a PhD, I revealed something about the price I am willing to pay for the perks of this job, like the three-minute thesis competition. And this is the kind of price that I study. In my field, we have two ways of going about that. The stated preference approach deals in hypotheticals. For example, I might ask each one of you if I were to offer you a job that gave you a 10% wage increase, but required you to commute an extra 15 minutes each way, would you take it? Now, the problem with the data collected with this approach is that it's hard to be quite sure whether people can really predict what they would do if it came to it in real life. And this is where the other approach comes in. It's called reveal preference, and it involves studying the real choices people make, like when I chose to do the PhD. But to make sure we're really comparing like for like with this approach, we need high quality data and we need a lot of it. I've used a national insurance data set from Germany with information on millions of people moving from job to job over a period of more than a decade to try and tackle this and estimate the price of commuting. I found that the price women pay to reduce their commuting distance is 40% higher than the price men pay. And that is, these figures are for childless women. When women have their first child, their commuting price shoots up to twice that of men. So if we're serious about tackling the gender wage gap, where jobs are located and how we can help workers get to them are some of the details that we should not lose sight of. Thank you.